When I started woodworking, in my last house's garage, I didn't worry much about dust. I'd blow it out the garage door with a compressor after I was done working. I didn't really consider the health aspect. I wore masks when sanding, but not always, and rarely when it got too hot. Here's my new shop. As you can see, the level of dust around the shop is very low, compared to my garage. All my tools are accessible without setting up first, and dust collection is available on each tool that can do it. I started my new shop by drilling two boards into the wall, and installing this, my new dust extractor. I plugged it into a remote control outlet and have a 20 foot tube coming out of it. The second thing I install into my shop is this dust filter. It keeps the air moving in the shop and catches all airborne dust. It comes with a remote control. I can set it on three levels and you can put it on a timer so it keeps running for a certain time after you're done working. The air feels great, fresh and no dust settles on surfaces ever. It uses two filters, one you can see here from the outside and the second one in the inside for finer particles that get through. While we're here, I'm going to show you how I clean the filter and make it last longer. I simply take my dust extractor, start it and use it like a vacuum. I've been doing this once a week and it keeps my filter nice and white. While on the subject of cleaning filters, I'll show you how I keep my shop vac running strong, doing the same thing using my dust extractor as a vacuum. As you can see, it makes a massive difference on the shop vac's filter, keeping it going strong, longer and quieter. One of the worst offenders dust-wise is the router table, and with a dust extractor it barely leaves anything behind. I set up a 90 degree angle and a piece of PVC on most of the tools to make connecting the hose simpler. I don't want to have more than connecting the hose to do, ever. The spindle and belt sanders are next to each other and share the same PVC setup as the router table. This avoids having to carry the 4 inch tube on tables and in weird angles. I connect my tube with a thumb screw. Someday I might upgrade this to some form of quick connect system, but for now this works fine. For the belt sander it works great, but not perfectly. Most of the dust ends up on the left part and down into the dust extractor. I thought that this part would have some form of dust extraction on the sides, but it doesn't. When I use the wheel, it gets dusty. I keep the dust extraction controller with me. It's easier to keep the noise down when I'm done, for personal or video filming reasons. When I'm done using a tool, I usually use the extractor as a vacuum to clean up everything it missed or wood chips from the lath or other tools with no extraction. Here's one of my new favorite tools, my joiner. It lets me use pallet hardwoods that I've been keeping for months and make nice usable square lumber. It's also the tool that I have that requires dust collection the most. Without it, it simply clogs from the excess chips. As you can see, zero chips or dust around my workspace. It really is amazing to work with dust collection. Let's go finish milling this piece of wood on the table saw and plane. Setting up the PVC for the saw was tricky, as it rotates with the blade, the exhaust port. I initially made a design that was bolted to the table, and I had to start over when I tried tilting my blade and realized my error. The table saw is one of the tools that doesn't do great with dust control, but it's still much, much better than not having it. No huge dump of dust under the table, a lot of it still comes up from the top though. If I was using the blade protector, I could have a second back tube coming from the top. I've never learned to use a table saw with the protector on, and it feels in the way to me. The 
The last step to get this board milled on all four sides is the planer. I could have done those last two steps on the planer since my wood is so thick it could have been planed sideways safely too. My planer has its own exhaust system with a fan. I have it set up so that a fabric bag catches all the chips at the end of a 10 foot 4 inch tube. Using the dust collector would be useless as this pushes the chips very hard already. When I'm doing a quick job sometimes I don't even take the bag out like this time. My bandsaw and my miter saw have small outputs and are better served by the shop vac. When I tried reducers on the dust extractor it performed poorly and whistled loudly. It does well and as you can see the vacuum started automatically when I started the saw. This is because of a system that you plug both tool and saw on and it will automatically start the saw when you use the tool and keep it running for 6 seconds after. I'll put a link in the description on where to find this. As you can see from the dust behind the saw, the miter saw dust control is not great. It's better than without it for sure, but it still have to vacuum this area often once I'm done working. I don't have a track saw, but when I have to cut down sheet goods, I use my small circular saw. It has a dust port, which works better than I expected. I plug my saw into the auto vac starter, connect the tube, and it gets most of it. There's still a few tools that when I use them, I can't use my dust collection. And after I'm done, there's some chips or dust all over. For the few times I use the drill press, I'll let them fly and clean them up after. Next is a tool I've not shown on my channel yet, my lathe. This is a lost cause dust collection wise. And if your tools are sharp enough, you should be making chips, not dust. I use my dust extractor to vac it all up after I'm done. My worst non-dust controlled offender is my palm router. This thing makes dust. I love this tool though, it's amazing, powerful and a huge part of finishing my projects. Now that I have a properly dust control setup, I'll try and use my router table more. But reaching for this palm router is hard to resist when I'm used to the process so much. As you can see, this thing makes a mess. It makes you realize how well the dust control worked on the router table's fence earlier. I hope from this new shop I can learn and evolve as a woodworker, make bigger and nicer things in the following months and years. While staying safe and keeping our fingers is a huge priority, staying healthy and not breathing in sawdust every day is super important. I'm glad this is now set up and I can work with peace of mind. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and see you next time.